Hi there, my name is Kelsey, and today we're going to be creating a simple Pong game using Scratch. So if you don't know what Pong is, it's essentially similar to a game of table tennis, where there's a ball that bounces around the screen, and there are two players, each who has a paddle on either the left or the right side of the screen. The point of the game is to stop the ball from touching the back of your side of the screen and to get it to touch the other players while deflecting it with your paddle. So this is a beginner level project for those who are new to Scratch as it makes use of making costume, using if statements and forever loops, as well as variables and broadcasting. So let's get started. To start, we're just gonna create our sprites. So I'm gonna start by making my paddle sprites. To do this, I'm just gonna make a rectangle. So I'm just gonna make a simple black rectangle and on your screen, you'll be able to drag it wherever you want. And then I'm gonna size this down quite a bit smaller. I'll try, it. there we go, I'll do size 30. So you're free to change it however you like. In this case, I'd like to make mine a little longer. So I'll do that. And that's my left paddle. So here I'm just gonna rename it left paddle. And then to duplicate it, we can just right click and duplicate it. I'm just gonna call this right paddle. So what we're gonna do with that is we're just gonna move it over to the right and we'll set the placement for them later so we don't need to worry exactly about where they are. And then my next one I'm just gonna do is just the ball. So in this case, I'm gonna just make a circle. You can make it whatever color you want. I'm gonna make mine green. So there we go, we have our ball. And now we need to make our backdrops. Okay, so there's a couple different backdrops we're gonna to need to make. The first one I'm gonna make is our main game screen. So to do this, I'm just going to start by making a rectangle. I'm just gonna make it white to start. And I'll just make it about half as big as the game screen. And then I'll just make another one and bring it to the other side. And there we have our main game. So you'll see we have a middle line and I'm just gonna make this ball a lot smaller. There we go. So we have our ball, we have our line right in the middle. And what I'm gonna do now is add a colored line to each side. So for this side, I'm gonna make that and I'm just gonna fill it with red because I want that side to be red. And I'm just gonna make the exact same thing, but in blue for the other side. So I'm gonna go in and do that. And there we have it. We have both of our sides with a little color at each side. So now that we have that, we have a couple more backdrops to make. Um, this one here, I'm gonna just make it say, player one, one because this is gonna be the message that will show up when a player wins the game. So I'm just gonna make that nice and big and stick it right in the middle. And because we know play player one's color is red, I'm just gonna make it red. And now we can just duplicate that, change the text to blue because we know that player two is blue. And now we'll edit it and make it say player two one. And there we go, that's our basic win and lose screens. And then all I'm gonna do is make one other one that explains the rules of the game. So I'm just going to choose a font that I like and write the title of the game. And we can make it as big or small as we like. I'm just gonna make it about that size and fill it with white. Then I want a background color. So I'm gonna make a background I'm gonna fill it with blue. There we go. And then here I'm just gonna select it and send it backwards. So that Pong comes up on the top. And now all we need to do is write our instructions. So I'm going to start 
by creating the ones for our left paddle. So I'm just going to do use. Oh, we can't see what I'm writing. So I'm going to delete that, change the font to white, and then it'll be a lot easier to see. Okay, use the W and S keys to move the left player. And then we can just take that and we can scale it down so that it's as big or small as we need. And then we'll make an instruction for our right player. Use the up and down arrows for to move the right player. Press. And here we're going to have a button that we want to press to begin. So I'm going to do Z to begin and Q to launch the ball. So there we go, we have our instructions. I'm just going to move those to where I want them. I'll just stick them down near the bottom. And there we go, let's get started on the code for the ball. So to start, we're gonna want to choose what we want the ball to do when we press our green flag button to start the game. So I'm gonna start by dragging out a when green flag clicked. And then what I wanna do here is create a new variable. I'm gonna call this one distance. So I've made distance and we're just gonna set distance to eight to start. So this will basically control where the ball is and a lot of our commands in the future will depend on that. And then we're gonna to want to change the backdrop. So you'll see if we come here, we can switch backdrop to, and in this case, I want it to be, to be backdrop four, which is, and in this case, I want it to be backdrop four, which is this blue Pong background with the instructions. So we'll do that. And then we're going to make an event and broadcast. We're gonna make a new one. I'm gonna call this one hide because this is what we're gonna to use to hide all of our other objects. So now that we did that, remember how we said we're gonna press Z to begin? We're gonna get started on the code for that. So for that, I'm going to do when blank key pressed and instead of space, we're gonna go all the way down to the bottom and select the Z key. And here we're gonna go, we need a forever loop and an if statement. So we're gonna do that. And basically all we wanna do here is check if the ball is touching the right, uh, the right paddle. So we're gonna select it from here. If touching right paddle, then I wanna have a sound. So I'm going to choose start sound and I'm just gonna use this pop sound for now. You don't have to put a sound. I just felt like putting something in. So we'll do that. And then we want to set the ball to go to a certain place. So we're gonna choose glide for, and we'll do 1.5 seconds to, and for X, we want to do negative 244. And for Y, we want it to pick a random place vertical or going vertically on the game screen. So we're gonna do pick random. And here we're just gonna do negative 180 to 180. So that way it'll just pick randomly and go to that location. So now we're gonna make it so that we can um, check if it's touching a specific color and give out points. So we're gonna need two more if Z key pressed blocks. So I'm gonna drag that out and we'll get started on this. So we'll go down to here and select Z and we'll do that on both of them. 
So when the Z key is pressed, we want to, and we're going to go down to variables and make two more. We're gonna call them player one points. And here we can uncheck them so that they don't show up. And I'm gonna make one that is player two points. You'll notice I'm just doing P1 and P2 because I find that more convenient, although you're free to change them to whatever you want. So for each of these, we just want to set the points to zero. So we have player one and player two. And then I'm gonna start focusing on player one and then we'll do player two right afterwards. So here we're gonna go to control and grab a forever loop. And inside there, we're going to choose wait until because we want it to wait until it is touching the color blue because you'll notice if we go to backdrops and say we switch it to this, we want it to check if it's touching this blue section on the back right there. So we'll go back to our code and sensing and we're gonna do wait until touching color and we're going to select whichever color we want. So in this case, I'm just going to go over here and choose this blue color from the edge. And so once we have our wait until block, we're going to make the ball go to a specific place. So we're going to go, go to X 222 and Y eight. So that's just the location we want the ball to go. And then after that, we're going to set our distance and change player one points. So here we're going to go down to variables. We're going to grab our set distance block, set distance to 12. And then we're going to change player one points by one. So this will give player one, who is the left player, one point. And finally, we're just gonna broadcast reset, which is gonna be a new broadcast that we're gonna create. So let's make that now. So now that we have that, we're free to make our next one. So for the player two, we could make this all over again, although what I'm gonna do is just right click, click duplicate, and then we have it. And we can just go through and change the color We'll change it to the red. So I'm gonna go over here and you select the color that you want. So when touching red, and then we need to change these coordinates. So I want to go to negative 218 and eight instead. And for this one, we're gonna set the distance to eight. And then we're gonna change player two's points instead because when it hits player one's back, player two gains a point for that. And then we'll keep our broadcast reset. So the next thing we're gonna do is control the sound for if it's touching the left paddle. So remember what we did up here, we're gonna do the exact same thing. So I'm gonna duplicate that. I'm just gonna move it over to here so that we have it. So if it's touching the left paddle, then we want it to still play the sound and we want it to glide to, here we're gonna do 227, let's just pick a number, and then we'll keep our random number. So what we wanna do here as well, is we want to show the ball because up till now it should be hidden. So we're gonna do show, and then we want to start by sending it to a specific location. So we're gonna do go to, and for our X, we're gonna do negative, whoops, negative two, 24. And then for Y, we're just gonna set it to eight. So there we go. That will control what happens when the game first starts. So now that we're done with that, we can move on to one of our other Z pressed. So we have a couple of these because there are more convenient ways to do this, but they're a bit trickier. And given that this is a beginner tutorial, 
um, we're going to go for making a little bit of longer code instead of using a lot of complicated ideas and concepts. So we'll start with our when Z key pressed. And here we're just going to change the backdrop to backdrop one. Because you'll remember at the start, it's backdrop four, which is our instructions. And now we want to change it to the game screen, which is exactly what it'll do. You'll see it'll change to this screen we have here. And then all we want to do is show our variables. So we'll show variables for points. So we'll do player one points and player two points. So you'll see if we do that, then you can place them wherever you like. So I'm going to place them right there. Yep. So just going to move that where I want it. And there we go. We have our points, player one and player two. So now that that's done, we just need to define our hide, our reset, our space. And remember, we said the ball will start when we do the Q key. So let's do that. So to start, I'm going to do our when I receive hide, because that was one of the first things we defined. So when I receive hide, we just want to hide everything. So we're going to do hide variable and do player one. Then we're going to hide variable player two. And then we want the ball to go to a specific location. So in this case, I'm just going to have it go to zero, zero. And then finally, we want it to hide itself. So you'll see if we scroll down here, we have our hide block. And there we go. So if we click on hide, it will just hide everything except the backdrop. So now all that we need to do is we'll do what happens when our Q key is pressed. So we'll do when Q pressed. Then what we want it to do is we need an if statement. So then we want to check if the distance is less than 10. So we'll do 10. And then we're going to go down to variables and grab distance. So if distance is less than 10, then we want the ball to go to negative 244 and 8, just like we've done previously. So negative 2, negative 224, and y will be 8. And then, so now we're just going to make the same exact thing over again, except with the space key. So you'll see up at the top, we have space, if space is pressed. And then in this case, we want to check if the distance is greater than 10. So we're going to put that down there and do it 10. And we'll get rid of that operator and replace it with this one. So the space is for if distance is greater than 10. Otherwise, we'll do the Q. And there we go. That is all of the code done for the ball. So now that we're done with that, we're going to move on to our paddles. So let's do the left paddle. So to start, remember we had our hide command. We're going to define what happens when we do that. So all that's going to be is just hide the sprite. So we'll drag out our hide block. And now we need to make one for reset because remember we um, have a reset message as well. So when I receive reset, we want it to go to a specific location. So in this case, we're going to do negative 240. You can do whatever place you want your paddle to go to. And I want the other one to just be zero because we want it right in the middle of the screen. So see if we do that, it will place itself right where we want it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do what happens when our Z keys are pressed. So for now, we're only going to work on the first one, but I'm going to grab two because we're going to need a second layer. So we're going to once again, scroll down and find Z. 
Okay, so up here, we're gonna decide uh, what happens when we win. So we're gonna go down to control and choose our wait until. And in this case, we want to wait until this player's points are equal to 10. So we're gonna choose that, make it 10. And then remember, we're gonna go down here and here we're just gonna choose player one points. So wait until player one points are equal to 10. And then we're gonna change the backdrop to player one wins backdrop. So in that case, we know that was backdrop two. And then finally, we're just gonna broadcast hide because remember that will just hide everything that we have in the game. So only the backdrop is shown. So now we're gonna control how it moves. So we're gonna start by doing when Z key pressed, we're going to show it. So we're gonna drag out our show block and then we're gonna to go to a specific location. I'm gonna choose the same one I chose for reset. So that is negative 240 and zero. And then what we're gonna need is a forever loop and two if statements, because these are gonna control how the paddle moves up and down. So let's do that. So we're gonna go to sensing and choose if a certain key is pressed. So if key, in this case, we want it to be our W key, because remember, we said W and S are gonna control the player on the left. So for W, then all we're gonna do is go to motion and change X by 10. So that will make it go up. And then we're gonna do the same thing for an S, except we're gonna do change it by negative 10 so that it goes down. So let's do that same thing here. And instead of change X, we're gonna to want to change Y. Because remember, X controls going horizontal or side to side and Y goes up and down. So here I'm gonna do negative 10 and I'm gonna replace our change X by 10 here with a change Y by 10. And there we go, that will control this paddle. So you'll see once we play the game that it will be able to move up and down. So now that we're done with that, it's time to make the code for our right paddle. So this is gonna be almost exactly the same. So what we're gonna do is come down here, open our backpack, come down here, open our backpack, and then you can just drag and drop the code blocks right into it and it'll make a copy of them right in there. So then I'm just going to use this one and I'm gonna make a copy of each of these down in the backpack. You don't have to do it this way, I just find it a lot more convenient. And then you can just drag them straight from the backpack right onto your screen. And you'll notice that they all go to the same place to start. So you can just move them around. And there we go. So we have our main ones here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change a couple things about this. First of all, for the location, I don't wanna go to the same location as the other paddle. So I'm gonna choose to go to X255. It could be anywhere, I just chose that location and keep Y as zero. So we're gonna change that on the Z pressed as well. So 255 and zero. And then remember here, we want to wait until player two points are equal to 10 because we're controlling player two now. So we're just gonna make that swap. And instead of backdrop two, we want it to change the backdrop three, which is the one that says that player two wins. So we're gonna do that. And now all we need to do is make a couple changes to this code. So instead of key W, we want the up arrow and instead of S, we want the down arrow. So there we go. This should make our game work. So let's test it out. So we'll press Z to begin. And you'll notice that the ball moves and you're able to move these up and down. And you'll notice that if something happens, 
it automatically goes right back to its spot and we can press the Q to launch it again. And notice that I have changed the coordinates for this paddle here, for the right paddle, because it was in the middle of the screen. So all I did was change from 255 to 290, and now it sits right at the very back, just like this red one does. So there we go, that's how we've made a simple Pong game. If you have any issues with your code, feel free to go back and check it again with the code that we've already made, and have fun with this project.